Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's me Sunstar and you are joining me today for another weekly tarot reading. Who's excited? Who's excited? Let me know in the comments. Before we get going, I want to say a big thank you for being here with me. And I want to remind you to give this video a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you're so inclined, please hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted when I'm posting videos. For today's video, I wanted to just give you a little rundown of what we're going to do. So last week we talked about happiness and cultivating the practice of joy. And so I want to follow up a little bit about that and talk about the eight pillars of joy and how you might use those to cultivate joy and happiness in your life. And then um, from there, I want to share three things that um, I saw on Instagram this morning from one of my friends, Jaden, posting. And it's called thing th three things I hope you remember. So I want to share that with you. And then we will dive into our weekly tarot reading. In order to do that, of course, I need to introduce you to our three sacred objects, which happen to come in one package this week. If you saw my Instagram post, you know what I'm talking about. But in case you didn't, let's show you and do the reveal. So I always choose three separate objects to guide our intuition towards which pile of tarot cards are for you. And this week I used a triple moon symbol that I created to basically guide our intuition. So we have our waxing crescent moon, we have our full moon, and we have our waning crescent moon. Which pile are you called to? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. Are you a call to the waxing crescent moon, the full moon, or the waning crescent moon? And yes, I'm rocking my moon ring right now. Not a mood ring, my moon ring. <laughs> to begin, I invite you to go get a candle so that we can light our candle together, creating sacred space. And if you are no stranger to my Sunstar Weekly Tarot readings, you know we light a candle, so hopefully you're already prepared. Here we go. As I spark this match, I call in the sacred element of fire. Fire, the flame. Element of the south, of passion, of creativity. We invite you into our space. As I circle this candle round once, twice, and three times, I ask that this space here be cleansed. And I ask that your space at home, wherever you may be, are cleansed with the element of fire. Fire is a protective element. It's a cleansing element. It's an element that activates us. So welcome fire to the Sunday activation. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we are gonna be talking about the eight pillars of joy. And the eight pillars of joy come to us from the Book of Joy by Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama. So I'm just gonna share what they are, how they might impact our lives for just a moment, because last week, if you remember, we talked about how we might cultivate happiness in our world. And it was really, really, um, eye-opening for the eight pillars of joy. I'm just going to read them off real quick and then we'll talk about each one of them. So number one is perspective. Number two, humility. Three, humor. Four, acceptance. Five, forgiveness. Six, gratitude. Seven, compassion, which we talked about last week as well. And eight, generosity. So when we talk about perspective, the Dalai Lama and um, Desmond Tutu beautifully spoke about the perspective taking as the sacred pause, the hanged one. How often do we talk about the sacred pause on this channel? Perspective says, take a pause and step out. How far can you gain perspective? Okay, so we're in a microcosm of our own world. Step back. Does this matter to you in the larger community scheme? Does this matter in a country scheme? Does this matter in a global scheme? Does this matter in a universal um, perspective? So the further we can get from a situation or a struggle or an issue, the more space we can create from it so that we're not right up next to it. Like here's us and our issue right here dancing. 
When we create space from that, we can start to see what's really going on, how maybe we're reacting, how the situation is handling things, aka how it's evolving. It can be really intense, but this space, this sacred pause to take that view and step back in the bird's eye view of the situation allows you to maybe see some things that you weren't before. So it helps us solve problems with creativity and compassion rather than rigidity and activity. And yes, I am reading this off of a screen. So sorry, I'm just going to move it right here. Number two, humility. Humility is about discovering how you depend on others. This one's hard for me. I love having a community, but I have cultivated a community that I sometimes don't lean on or don't allow to hold me. And that's been a very interesting experience after reading this book. I've talked I've talked about this with my good friend Angelo before, how many of us cultivate communities and then we don't use them. We cultivate these communities for others to have access to people who can listen, um, people who want to help and change the world, their world, whatever it may be. Yet we as leaders or we as spiritual people or we as the one who put together a community who show up for others often don't do that for ourselves. We don't ask someone to show up for us. Humility. Discover how you depend on others. You know, we could even think about that, the fact that we're one of seven billion people. One of seven billion people means we got to understand that our woes are not the only woes in the world. And let's humble ourselves. Let's take ourselves down to think that we're the most important person of those seven billion. Yes, I do believe you're the most important person in your world, as I am in mine. But we can take it down a notch and really connect in with others by taking a little dose of that humble medicine. I'm still working on that one. I'm not the best at it, but I like to remember I'm one in seven billion. One in seven billion in however many thousands. So that humility, again, helps with that perspective taking as well. Okay, they build on each other. Three is humor. Find ways to laugh at yourself, your faults. Instead of crumbling, Let's laugh a little, laugh at yourself, laugh at life. It's gonna bring some levity, some lightness to the world and we definitely need that. Number four, acceptance. Don't argue with what was or is. Don't argue with reality, but acceptance is key about finding our way to joy. When we accept what is and we don't fight it, that means that we can find ways around, through, over, under when we accept what is right there in front of us. Number five, forgiveness. Tell your story, name the hurt. Grant, grant forgiveness to yourself, to others, to the situation, to how you've handled, whatever it may be. Renew and release that relationship. Forgiveness is so hard, but so beneficial for us, y'all. Have you forgiven yourself for the hardships that you faced? Have you forgiven others for how they reacted to you when they were in a hard space? It's not always not easy. Like you are responsible for finding your own joy. No one is going to find it for you. Practice perspective taking, being humble, laughing at everything that you can in the world, accepting things for what they are, forgiving things for what they are. And then six, finding gratitude. Be thankful for what goes well and the learning and growth possible when things don't go well. So we have some gratitude in this scenario. Be thankful, y'all. Find gratitude. Cultivating a practice of gratitude is key. Make yourself a gratitude jar with you and your family, your friends, your roommates, and read it regularly. Number seven, compassion. We talked a lot about compassion last video. So all I'm going to say is it's about loving kindness. May you be free from suffering. May you be healthy. May you be happy. May you have peace and joy. Begin with yourself. Then those you love. Then those you know. And then those you don't know. And then those you fear and anger and who anger you. Build the compassion out. Start small with yourself, which is actually really huge. Be compassionate towards yourself and push that compassion out in the world as it grows within you. Share your compassion. Don't keep it for yourself. And finally, number eight, generosity. Be generous. Offer more and more and more and more and more of yourself to others. What you can, right? Don't deplete your resources, but don't hold on to things. Capitalism, capitalism makes us think that things are scarce. You know one thing that's not scarce? Compassion. 
You can share that compassion once you've cultivated it within yourself in a generous way, right? If we're not all made of money, so we can't all fund people's lives. But I can say nice things. I can show up and be respectful. I can offer joy and peace and um, kindness and humor and gratitude to all those around me once I've done that for myself and out. These beautiful eight pillars of joy are going to help you step back out of the full-on tunnel vision of living in our world. Step back. Gain some perspective. Show up with humility, humor, acceptance, forgiveness, gratitude, compassion, and generosity, and watch joy start to bloom in your life. Watch joy be reflected back to you and your community around you, y'all. It is a practice, which means we have to practice and try. It's not going to be done like that. All right, y'all, those eight pillars of joy. Oh, it's not easy, but take your time with it. You got this. I believe in you. To follow up with that, I'm going to share three beautiful hopes that the writer Alex L, um, who I found on Instagram from my friend Jaden, I'll tag her below in the Instagram or in the description box. Um, I want to share three things that she hopes you remember that I also hope you remember. One, I hope you remember that you are worthy of unwavering and unconditional love. Number two, I hope you remember that trying to please everyone isn't what you were born to do. Say that one again. I hope you remember that trying to please everyone isn't what you were born to do. That's a big one, y'all. And number three, I hope you remember that even when you're walking through a painful season, you are worthy of joy. I hope you remember that even when you are walking through a painful season, you are worthy of joy. All right, everyone, in case you forgot after those amazing eight pillars of joy and awesome three things from Alex L to remember, I want to share our three objects again. We've got the cycle of the moon. We've got the waxing crescent moon. Yes, I said it right. Waxing crescent moon. That's our first pile, pile one. We've got our full moon, which is pile two. And we've got our waning crescent moon, pile three. Which one did you choose? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments. Which one did you choose? To begin, before we dive into our tarot cards, let's take our three sacred breaths, y'all. Three sacred breaths for three sacred piles of cards. And get comfortable and get cozy, wherever you may be. <sighs> Breathing rhythmically, naturally. And we're gonna take three breaths and on our third exhale, make some noise when we exhale out. Ready, in, out. Ready, breathe in, and out. This is our third breath on our exhale. Make some noise. Breathe in and out. <sighs> you are worthy of joy. You are worthy of unconditional love. And you are worthy of some beautiful wisdom from these tarot cards. So let's dive in. Okay, y'all, whether you picked pile one, two, or three, we have three decks, three juicy decks that we're using today. Number one, we're using the Chrysalis Tarot. I've never used this on my channel. I'm super, super, super excited to show you these cards. Look at the beautiful backing, y'all. Ah, so Chrysalis Tarot. We're using the um, Divine Portal Oracle from the Sacred Cocoon on Instagram. Love this deck. And we're using the Wisdom of the Oracle from Colette Baron Reed. Let's get into these cards. So without further ado, pile one. We've got the Waxing Crescent Moon, pile one. Here we go. So our Chrysalis Tarot deck, the card is... Seven of Mirrors. Ooh, pretty. 
pretty and the mirrors are cups in this deck. I love the art and illustration. So as we see, we have a beautiful woman who is working at her loom and she's got these mirrors around her and she looks like she's weaving something very important. And what is her, her face looks very focused. So a seven of mirrors. Seven of mirrors is about discernment, y'all. Seven of cups is about discernment, understanding where our choices are leading us. Are we making decisions with actual facts in mind? Okay, pile one. So this is for you, waxing crescent moon. Have you been making good decisions for yourself? Are they based in reality or are they based in the reality that we have created for ourselves in our head? Those are not always the same. What's going on out in the world and what's happening in our head often can be different. So this is a card for you to remember to be aware of why you're choosing what you're choosing. Discernment means to be able to take a lot of things in and to sit with it and work through whatever they may be and see which one is an alignment, see which one is the correct choice for you. Not for everyone, for you. Okay, so for the seven of mirrors, we are saying right now, seven of cups, we're saying what do you need to pay attention to? Have you been making decisions based off of false assumptions or false facts, misinformation, right? Let's pull it back. Let's get some reality, check in with ourselves, tap into what's happening here in this world to see if you're making decisions correctly for yourself this week ahead. So when you're faced with the decision, waxing crescent moon, Ask yourself, do you know what's really going on or do you need to take some perspective from our pillars of joy, some perspective so that you can understand how to make the best decisions for you, how to make the aligned decisions for you. Oh, I love this. Our divine portal, portal oracle card is ready for harvest. Okay, so, ooh, I love this. Ready for harvest mixed with the seven of mirrors. So, Maybe you've been telling yourself that you're not actually ready to do something, that you need to gain more skills, that you need to figure out yada, yada, yada. No, no, it's time to harvest. It's time to gather all of the things that you've put the work into, okay? Um, and with the seven of mirrors and discernment and making proper decisions for yourself, what I think this means is that you have all the tools at your fingertips to make these decisions. You're just not necessarily putting all the pieces together. The harvest is waiting for you. The bounty is waiting for you. But how you make these decisions this upcoming week, the past couple of weeks, the upcoming month is really going to impact your harvest and impact how you feel about that. If you think you're ready to, if you can, or if you're going to live in scarcity, don't live in scarcity. Be aware of exactly where you are and why you need to make that decision so that you can access the bounty around you that you've worked for. Okay. Hello. Why are you making the decisions? Are you making them correctly? Are you making them thinking the harvest isn't there? Sad day. Don't do that. All right. Our divine portal oracle is the deep knowing. Deep knowing. You know deep down inside of you how to make the correct decisions. You know what situations you are in. Why are you doubting yourself? Why are you doubting that the harvest is there? This deep knowing is there to say that it's all within you. You've put in all the work. You've put in the time. You are under some false illusions. These mirrors are reflecting negative things back to you. Who are you surrounding yourself with? What are they telling they see in you? If they're not seeing you for you, kick rocks, y'all. Bye. Get out. We don't have time for that. There is a bounty that is waiting for you and your deep understanding, your deep knowing of why you're doing what you're doing, of making the decisions you're doing and actually making them and following through and paying attention to what's around you and really seeing clearly is bringing you into access to your harvest. All right, waxing crescent moon. That was good. Pay attention to the decisions you're making this week and make sure you're making them for um, the real reasons for you. Don't let anyone or anything fool you this week, okay? There is a deep, big, bountiful harvest waiting for you when you make these decisions from your deep knowing, from your soul, from your center, from a place of compassion and joy instead of scarcity. Ooh, waxing crescent. I love that one. What do you think?
Let me know. Let me know what you think. Oof. Okay. Next up, we're going to go to our full moon. Our full moon pile two. Full moon pile two. Here we go, full moon pile two. Let's start with a chrysalis row. Ooh. Four of mirrors. Okay, four of mirrors. Here she is. Here she is. Oh, look at how beautiful. We see the four mirrors in the water. Why does she look like she doesn't care? <laughs> Anyone else getting that vibe? What? She's like looking down. She's not paying attention to anything around her. She's just caring about her hair. I think this is a message that you need to get present. You need to be present this week. Are you paying attention to what's going on? Pile two, full moon, celebrating reality, not what is in your head. What's going on? I think it's time that you tap back in this week. Okay, it's time to care what's happening in your world. I think some of us have become detached in the past couple of weeks because the world has been hard. So where are you gonna bring your focus and attention to? We've got four mirrors here, four cups. We have options of where we wanna put our attention and our focus, but we need to come back to reality. We need to tap back in this week, full moon, okay? We have been lollygagging. We have been in la-la land, which we did need. I'm not saying we didn't, but it's time to move out of that. It's time to say, I'm ready to be present. I'm ready to make conscious choices and decisions in my world that are re related, <coughs> excuse me, to what's going on. It's time to pay attention. Don't be detached, attached to something this week in a good way, whether it's to compassion for yourself or attaching to the idea of being present this week and not dipping into doom scrolling, not dipping into panic mode when there is literally nothing we may be able to do about something, okay? It's time to get tapped back into what's going on in your world. Build a new foundation. Fours are foundational pieces. How do you want to operate in this next couple of months knowing that things are going to be up, down, all around, and all over? Okay, full moon? Your divine portal oracle message is find the pattern. <laughs> I think you've been called out, full moon. You've been called out. What is the pattern with this detachment? Were you attached and then something didn't go your way so you detach and you give space? Or you feel so unable to help and change and shift the world so you just get out of it. You just pull back and far away. What is the pattern that's going on? What is causing you to detach? What is causing you to not pay attention? What is causing you to get so involved in your own little microcosm world that you don't see what's going on around you? Find the pattern. Why is it there? Mm, 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 mm. This is good. Colette Baron reed you're a thinker. You're a thinker. Okay? It's time to think about this. Don't avoid it, right? Don't overthink it to an extent because thinkers also overthink. They get caught up in the narratives. That's how you found yourself here. So how are you thinking? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about the patterns? Are you thinking about why you're detached? Are you constantly thinking about things that you literally cannot influence and change because you are one person in one spot in the world and all you can do is send out love and compassion and forgiveness and gratitude? That might really cripple you a little bit. You might feel like you need to do more, but literally doing the best we can in the moment is all we can do. Get tapped back in. Find the pattern as to why you are feeling like you can't be present and think about those things in new ways. And don't overthink. This is the reminder not to get on the hamster wheel. Look at her. She's like contemplative and kind of sad. So like overthinking crushes things. Overthinking is going to make the pattern more complicated. Overthinking is actually going to keep us in this detached state. So simplify your thinking about things. Write it out. Don't keep it in here. Write it out. Write it out. Don't keep it in here. Write it out. Write it out. Write it out so that you can become attached and find the pattern. Get into your journal. Full moon. Get into your journal. Okay? What'd you think, full moon? What'd you think? Wow. Oh, here we go. Pile three. Waning crescent moon. Manifestation magic. Get, y'all, why? Three mirrors. Three mirrors, two of mirrors. This is the two of cups, the love card, the union card. Yeah, right. So if you picked the waning crescent moon, there's a certain sense of harmony this week. 
there's a certain sense of coming together between you and someone else, whether it be romantic or partnership or business, whatever it is, it's this beautiful union. The coming together of multiple threads that literally are going to weave the story into the future. And what I love about these two swans, look at them. There's these cute little mirrors. So if we're going to be putting out all of this amazing energy into the world where we're coming together and this coming together is going to create a force of energy to send out, give yourself some of that energy while you're doing this. Those mirrors are looking at you saying, reflect back that magic, that union, that partnership, that loyalty Two of waves, two of cups, two of mirrors, whatever it is, talks about union. And it's about this union that works so well together. Things are coming together. People, places, things are going to line up for you this week. Pay attention to where they line up. And I just want to make a note about um, coming together, unions. An aspect of coming together is respect. So if people are trying to come into your life and they're not giving you respect, they're not showing you loyalty, this isn't a two of mirrors, okay? They're not the one. Pass them along. Move them on out, okay? So the person, the place, the object, the thing, the partnership, business, whatever, this opportunity where you're going to come into union with this week is really a relationship of mutual respect and um, give and take, that ebb and flow. You deserve... Um, energetically reciprocal relationships. Two of mirrors. When you give, you receive, okay? This is a beautiful card to start with, Waning Crescent Moon. It speaks about a beautiful opportunity coming up this week. And then our Divine Portal Oracle card is Come Home and Rest. This union is going to feel easy for you. It's going to feel like you're coming home to what you know. It's going to feel as if you've been there before. So again, whether it's a business thing, whether it's a romantic relationship, whether it's a friend, it's not really going to matter. Okay? It's about recognizing that you are this, this union, this feeling is the coming together moment. Okay? This is, um, it's going to feel right. If it doesn't feel right in home, beautiful card, by the way. Thank you, Lati. If it doesn't feel like that, this is not the union that this card is speaking about. Okay? I just, I just want to say that. It makes it feel like there's going to be a few opportunities for coming together. But you're going to kind of need to use your discernment from the waxy crescent moon. Excuse me. You're going to need to use some of that discernment to understand which relationships, which partnerships, which opportunities are coming into your world that feel good, that feel like home, okay? And our divine portal, no, no, nope. Our wisdom of the oracle from Colette Baron reed card is, oh, I'm sitting down, blessed. Oh, this is just a sweet little deal for you this week, waning crescent moon. You got the ooey, juicy, gooey feelings this week of love. Um, it may be love. I hope you find love. If you find love, let me know. Let us know because that is blessed and highly favored. And also, whatever we're coming into project-wise, um, partnership-wise, at our jobs, whatever these opportunities of coming together moments, right? So two of waves, coming together, one, two, psh, coming together moments that make you feel good and feel rested and feel like, oh, I've been here before. Those are your blessings, don't pass them over. Bring it all together. Mm, mm, mm. What do you think, waning crescent moon? What do you all think, waxing full waning crescent moon? What do you feel? How do these cards resonate? Let me know what you thought of this in the comments. Let me know if the eight pillars of joy are something that you've already been practicing or that you're excited to bring in, y'all. Cultivating joy and happiness and compassion in our lives is our responsibility. No one else is going to do that. I hope that these weekly readings bring you closer to finding joy, happiness, and compassion and can help you show up for others when you're able and available to. All right, you magical sunrays. You powerful sunbeams. 
Thank you for gathering with me, for talking about joy, for doing some tarot, and for letting me know how you feel about all of it. I love hearing this. I love the connections that we find in these cards with each other. I'm sending you so much love and joy. I'm sending you powerful sunshine as the earth awakens, as we march boldly forward to springtime. It's almost here. It's almost here. Get ready. May you radiate and shine out that loving joy, the power of the sun in your own communities. And I will see you next week. Bye.